Well, well, well. That's what a man said when he was walking in the forest and saw 3D poles. <laughs> Folks, thanks for joining me for Illustration Masterclass here on this fine Friday. Wherever you are in the world, say hello, please, and I'm glad that you're here with me. Um, we're going to have some folks joining us over here on Behance.net. That's be.net or Behance.net slash Adobe Live. That's where I'll be following the live chat. So if you want to ask me some questions or if you have some comments about whatever we're doing today, please go ahead and make those comments there. If you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, I'm afraid I will not see your comments, um, but I appreciate you watching just the same, okay? Hi, Steve and Munir and Bliss and Wade and Cryo and Steven. Uh, let's make sure we don't get the Steve and Stevens mixed up there. Thank you for joining me here for Adobe Live Masterclass. Today we're going to talk about something that's easier to do than you might think, and that is to create distance and depth and space in your drawings, in your illustrations. What are some tricks and tips for doing this? Well, we're going to go over several of those with some simple examples and a little bit of a demo. We'll also look at the work of a few other artists and see how they do it, um, how it's put into practice, and then you can do it in your own work. That's the beauty of all this. Remember all of my Illustration Masterclass episodes and every episode I do for any Adobe Live show, including Brush Hour, Let's Go Fresco, and don't forget the over 150 episodes of the Draw Along show from the last two years. They're all archived on Behance and also on YouTube, so you can watch them back whenever you like. Alrighty, uh, some other folks are coming in here and joining us. What's up, Megan? Nice to see you. And Misha as well. Hello. Uh, glad you are joining us. Hi, hi, hi. Lots of highs. Oh, Oregon we have here. Where else? Ireland. Very cool. Very cool. Alrighty, let's uh, jump over here to Photoshop and take a look at what we're going to do. Here are some things I've listed. Six things you can do with your drawings to create the illusion of depth to create the impression that there is distance, okay, between different objects, foreground, middle ground, background, those kinds of things, all right? Um, and uh, hey, Corby, nice to see you from Texas. Overlap, number one. Scale, number two. Value and contrast, number three. Sharpness, perspective, hue, and saturation. Those are the six things we're gonna look at. All right, so we're gonna start with overlap. Now this one, you think, boy, Kyle, what an obvious one. But you'd be surprised how many people forget about the importance of this in their drawings. Um, so if I were to go ahead and <clears throat> draw a circle here, and this circle is representing a sphere, and I wanted you to know that this sphere was in front of this sphere, okay? Drawing these two next to each other does not help me to communicate that to the viewer, okay? But of course, if I do this, all right, now we absolutely are certain that this sphere, okay, is in front of the other, all right? What are some other things you can do? What about this? add a little shadow, a cast shadow onto that sphere. Now we're getting somewhere, right? There are other things you can do as well, like this. Let me just go ahead and do a crude selection of this other one in the background. Let's reduce it in size, okay, and do that. So we went from having two circles that were side by side in the illustration to one circle overlapping another, we add a little shadow, and then we also scale that second one down. And this is the, some of the things we're putting into play here with overlap and scale, these first two elements right here. All right, now, of course, you can think about a lot of ways that this is useful for organizing the space in a drawing. For example, we'll just do a very small little, little kind of a thumbnail right here, okay? And let's imagine, I'll zoom in for you here, Let's imagine that I say, okay, I have sort of like a ground plane here, okay? And here, I've got like a little 
uh, foliage there, like a bush or something. All right. Now watch this. I'm just going to place a little house right there. Now isn't it more interesting to have this bush overlap that house? So automatically, even though these are sitting on the same line here representing sort of a ground, there's already a little overlap there. Overlap, overlap, overlap. Okay, now let's take it a little step further and let's do this. We'll just put another shape behind it by having this shape connect with that roof line right there. This is all just using the overlap trick. And notice that we're not even drawing these elements as we did down here with a sort of perspective thing where we have this element closer to us and this element farther away if we're thinking about the fact that maybe our um, horizon line would be up here. Okay, we're moving to a vanishing point, right? Like so. We're not even putting any of that into play with this very simple illustration right here, right? And you'll notice that in our list, that's something we're gonna take a look at, which is perspective. But here, just keeping it really simple and keeping it really flat, we're just using overlap, all right? What if I then go ahead and do this? All right, I put a little line back there. And then I put another little shape, like there are some plants back there, some bushes or something like that. And then I can do this. Put a little tree back there, another little bush. See what we're doing? And here, this whole thing right here, watch this, I can sort of put a little reflection there. And that can now represent some water, right? So this could be like a little, sort of a, a little pond back there. And then we have some other elements, okay? In this sort of middle distance there. And then behind here, I can just do that. Take it right on up to the top. Okay, and then back here, look at this. You can put sort of like a suggestion of like a mountain. Back there. Okay, so everything we're doing here is just overlap, right? Easy peasy. Add a little detail to the house there. Okay, and then you could even right here in the foreground draw another little plant. And if you really want to do something good, check this out. Speaking of overlap, okay? Watch this. We're just going to do this. We'll just put a little tree trunk right there in the foreground, okay? And then we'll do that. Carry that back there. And now what you've done is you put something sort of like an extreme sort of foreground element right there, okay? And there you have it. So that is just simple, simple, simple stuff. Overlap, overlap, overlap. Now we did use a bit of scale because we made the tree back here a little smaller, right? We made these plants back here a little smaller, etc. Um, but you can see how just by building on top one element on top of another on top of another, right? You can create the illusion of depth. And I'm not really playing here with any special things like value, okay, in, in contrast. It's mostly just line. I did color in that tree there. Um, but you get the idea. Layan says, what are you doing here? <laughs> Uh, what we are doing is we're talking about distance and depth in a drawing and how you the ways you can do that different ingredients different elements you can put into play um, Happy Friday to you too Becca. Hey Carol. Nice to see you um, 
Hey, I'm so glad that these videos are helping you. That makes my day. Thank you for telling me that. Excelente. Okay. So, um, there you go. What do you think about that? Now, that's just overlap, right? So, we're already getting to a place here where we're communicating to the viewer that we have objects in the extreme foreground, in the foreground, in the middle ground, in the background, and we're not really using all the tricks, we're just using a couple of them. Overlap and a little bit of scale, and that's it, all right? Um, so, I think these are pretty clear, overlap and scale, and understanding how they, how they work. Um, and if you want to look at a good example of uh, scale in play, we're going to look at one particular illustration here that uses pretty much all of these beautifully. All right, why don't we take a look at that right now? And this is by the great N.C. Wyeth. Okay, let's take a look at this. Now, when I talk about um, overlap, well, you know, that's pretty clear to see that we have our figures here in the foreground, these kids, right? All on the beach. Look at the arrangement of these of these figures, by the way. No two silhouettes are the same. You notice that? Variety is the spice of life. Variety is also the spice of great drawing. Okay, folks. Silhouette here, right? That's one particular shape. Notice how it's joining up, connecting with this silhouette right there. They're pretty much making like one cool shape. Right, and I'm not going to make this a big composition lesson, but it's worth noting these kinds of things, right? Since this is illustration masterclass, we like to kind of throw pepper in a bit of this kind of stuff wherever we can, right? Look at this cluster of figures right here. This is a three punch, not a two punch right there. We've got three figures making a really interesting shape right there and then look at this let's put a little distance there so we don't have that equal spacing right change it up with the spacing and um yeah what have you got see that so interesting so much variety to all these shapes nice big space right there if, if this figure imagine this imagine if this were right here okay wouldn't be the end of the world but you start to get some sameness here in these groupings. So just push it all the way out there. And now all of a sudden, oof, that's a nice big space. Beautifully done, beautifully done. Okay, masterful. All right, now overlap. So these figures are overlapping the shoreline here. And these waves in the front, look how they have this nice sort of, here's one whole passage right here. Like that cuts all the way across the image, okay? This shape right here and then behind it you have another row right which gets hidden and then re-emerges okay as you go so that's that kind of thing where if you're drawing um, waves right imagine you're just using line and you're doing here what he's what he's doing you have a nice kind of a shape like this and then you have one behind it and then one behind that you let that dip behind there and then re-emerge okay and then again and then as you go back these get closer and closer to one another until eventually right see what's happening there and if i put more space here like this these bigger gaps right big gap here less slightly less slightly less okay help to create that illusion of something moving back in space now if i didn't tell you this was water okay i could even frame this like this okay and what i could do is i could tell you hey gang you are looking at a landscape in the Sahara Desert right you could say oh yeah it's sand dunes but look at that how they feel like they're moving back in space do you see this um, and that's that thing about creating just distance and overlap distance and overlap I'm increasing the distance as I move towards the foreground right as we come down um, this way to the bottom of the frame right 
And uh, then look at this. We just do this. We just go. There's a pyramid back there, right? We just put another one, just overlap and make it slightly smaller. The miracle of overlapping and scale. It really works. It really works. This is pretty cool, isn't it? All right. So back to our pal over here, N.C. Wyeth. Um, now, scale. Scale is the uh, second thing on the list here. We have overlap and scale. Now, clearly, we have the overlap of these figures, right, with the water. And I want you to notice that the water overlaps right the feet of uh, the giant so to speak although we are meant to understand of course that the feet are in the water most likely he's walking through the ocean um, but that still helps to create a little bit of distance another thing that creates distance is the lack of clarity and contrast here right as the, as we move downwards with the figure we get towards the ankles right notice how everything fades into um, the surrounding elements, the clouds, the water, right? Less and less contrast until they're almost imperceptible from one another. You can't tell, indistinguishable from another, pardon me, right? Look at this, this just, this calf right here just bleeds right into that cloud, all right? Um, and that's something I wanna talk about with sharpness, all right? Um, look how sharp and look how much contrast there is in these foreground elements. Lots of contrast, lots of bright, sharp, dark and light colors okay boom 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 uh, but when we get back here right everything fades and uh, less contrast definitely less saturation but I don't want to get distracted because what are we talking about scale now this is what's so cool about this because these other elements are in play right lack of lack of sharpness lack of contrast um, so we have softer edges in it right that's what I say when I mean sharpness um, lack of hue saturation, right? The, the saturation of the color. Um, and uh, also um, this, yeah, this this fading into one area, etc., one one into another. Because of all that, when we see the size, the scale of this giant, right? We know it is a giant. We know it's not a regular size man because of how large it is. Right, but we don't mistake this for a figure that is in the extreme foreground. If it were in the extreme foreground, it would have more contrast, more detail, more sharpness. Um, but because of the way it's treated and uh, the way that it's painted here, we then go, wow, not only is that guy really far away, but clearly he's enormous, right? So that's very cool. All right, so there's that scale thing in play right there. Now let's just go in reverse. Here, right, if you want to put things into scale, what you do is you give us a, a, a point of reference. All right, now you could use one of these same objects. You could have like the base of a pyramid right here. But you could also put a person Okay, on a camel. Right, and you could just say, oh, that's, um, that's a good way to understand scale right there. So you have a person on a camel here, and you're like, okay, as I move back in space, back in space, back in space, wow, those must be really big. Because I can imagine this person being about this big here, about this big here, and by the time you get back here, it's like just a speck. All right? So that's a way you can help the viewer understand how big or how small something is as well if you're not using necessarily these other tricks like sharpness and desaturating um, and uh, perspective and, and things like that. Okie dokie. All right, you're new to Behance. As Atula says, I am new to Behance. Looks fun. It is fun. You learn a lot of stuff and it's free. It's free art lessons, basically, folks. What more do you need? Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Such a simple technique with great results. Um, I agree, Megan. Simple techniques work well. 
fact, the more of those you know, the better off you are. Not everything has to be complicated, right? Not everything has to be complicated. Hi, Vanessa. All righty, Matthew's here as well. What's up, Matthew? Nice to see you. Moendwa, nice to see you as well. Hello, hello. All right, hope you all are enjoying this. Hope this is um, helpful for you. And you'll try some of these tricks with your own drawings. Why don't we hide our little buddy Wyeth here? Um, and we're going to look now. We've looked at scale and overlap quite a bit. I want you to look a bit more at value and contrast. We're going to look at, when I say value, I mean darks and lights. When I say contrast, I mean when a uh, dark is next to a light, how extreme are the differences between the two? Because things that have higher contrast, darker darks against lighter lights, um, will read more clearly and jump out at us um, as human beings. This is what we're drawn to. We're drawn to contrast, we're drawn to differences, we're drawn to those more extreme differences, okay? And um, that helps to push things most of the time. Not all these rules are set in stone, but it helps to push things most of the time towards us, push them into the foreground, okay? And I want to look at one of my favorite artists who's out there working in the world today doing great stuff, Mr. Ian McHugh concept artist for all kinds of things, including a little property you might have heard of called Star Wars. Let's take a look at Ian for a moment here. And we'll start with a black and white image because I think this really illustrates so well um, what we're talking about here. We'll slide that on up. All right, now what we have here is we have this lone figure in this cool looping sort of uh, growth of, of what looks like a tree or something like that. Um, and we have this sort of forest setting and then some stuff in the distance. Now, right away, since we've been talking about this, you can see several things in play and they are so effective. Let's start with overlap, okay? Look how many elements we have overlapping other elements to immediately create a sense of a lot of depth and distance. Here we have this enormous tree in the foreground, okay? And look how many other things that overlaps. It overlaps this rock, which overlaps this rock, which overlaps this, which overlaps this other uh, rock outcropping here, which then overlaps this sort of rock formation, okay? Followed by what appears to be like a tree, right? See how it grows here? Okay, um, which then overlaps more trees and another big rock and another rock. And then this mountain in the background and then another mountain in the background. And finally we have clouds and other atmospheric elements back there. But oh my gosh, 20 things overlapping one another. And note how once we get beyond sort of this area, okay, as we start to push back, Right, and I'll just go ahead and create a layer and draw on this to, to really clearly illustrate this. Um, as we start to push back in space, and when I say back, I really mean kind of we're moving upwards in the picture plane, okay? But we have a pretty low set horizon line here. I mean, the horizon line here is about here, all right? So that's, that's pretty low um, for what we're trying to accomplish here, pushing things back in the foreground, right? This is all in the foreground. Um, so lots of overlap that's close to one another, close, 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 close. Not a lot of like distance, vertical distance between each of these elements, right? If I were to push the horizon line higher, we might expect to see greater distance between this rock and that rock, okay, and this, because the camera angle's coming up, so we're looking more downwards at these things. But here where we are, okay, with my eye line being about here, I guess, um, maybe about here. Uh, we're going to have these things overlap a little closer together. Um, so as you push back though, here's what I want you to notice. What happens to our values, okay, the, the darks and lights? Are we going lighter or are we going darker? Generally speaking, as we move into the distance, into the background, we are moving lighter. And I can just illustrate that by selecting values. So here in the foreground, okay, we have this color, right? Now I move back to this element here, okay? 
little lighter. We're starting to get lighter here as we move up. Here's this in the background, this rock right here, followed by this rock, followed by this sort of mountainy thing, followed by this sort of mountainy thing. Look how light we are already. Okay, so as we go this way, right, and this whole thing, really what's happening is this, if you want to be really picky about it, right, just slide that up over here. This is what we're doing with our values. Okay, so as we move up and into the distance, we lighten things, we lighten things, okay? Pretty neato. Um, Wendra says, I have been reading a book about drawing. I love that highlighting some of the things I come across. Uh, okay, yes, I'm glad you're doing that and I hope this is helpful, thank you. Peter says, always carry a little sketchbook. Not a bad idea, not a bad idea. Um, so there you go, right? But this is a very common, popular trick you see in many, many, many paintings throughout the ages. Um, the moment, you know, artists started to understand perspective, right, you know, the Renaissance and around that time period, um, in addition to understanding how to draw in perspective so that elements make sense with regards to your vantage point and, you know, horizon lines and vanishing points and all this kind of stuff, um, they also started to take really uh, a close look at atmospheric perspective, like what happens with that distortion um, that you see where uh, an element, an object that's far off in the distance is going to appear less colorful, less detailed, and uh, a lot of the time, not always, cooler in temperature, okay, is that, that um, atmospheric uh, haze sort of uh, alters your impression of what the color Wherever you are. You see the trees in, in detail and they're, they're green and dark and clear. And then as you look over the successive ridges of mountains, further and further away, they appear to get bluer in tone and, and um, in hue rather, and lighter in tone, right? In value, lighter and bluer. And that's one of the things you can recreate in your own work, okay? Hey, Barbara. Glad you're back. Yes, these are essentials, Steve. You are correct, essentials. So that's a great example. Now, Ian, um, also scale. Look how big this tree is. We go, okay, well, I can understand that's a tree trunk. I get it. Um, now, this one's a little smaller, right? So we automatically are like, oh, cool, that's a little farther away from me. And these trunks are a little smaller. These are smaller still. And way back here, this little guy is smaller still. So we are communicating that I'm looking at an object here, the same, this object here is probably the same size as this one in reality, but it's further away because it's appearing smaller. So all you have to do is create the same object or type of object at a smaller size, push it slightly upwards in the picture plane, and you can oftentimes create the illusion that we're traveling back in space. Right, with that very first little illustration I did with the trees that were across the pond, you know, that's the same kind of a trick right there. So there you are. Now let's take a look at another example by uh, Mr. Ian here. Here's a lovely one. This one's full color. So now you can see um, some of these things happening. We were mentioning with color. We just pause for a moment and look at that you'll notice that the areas here in the foreground, okay, for this spaceship or whatever you want to call this vehicle, okay, and this one in the extreme foreground, which you'll notice he added a blur to it, so it feels like it's moving past us, close to where we are. A couple of things that really help with this, okay. One, look at this. This is our driver, all right? Look at the size of the driver's head and body compared to this guy, this guy, this guy, okay? Right away, we go, oh, they must be further away because they're all humans. They're not like, you know, these are not um, munchkins from, what is it, the Wizard of Oz or whatever. You know, these are humans, right? Normal average size uh, folks right here and average size folk right there. So we say, oh, look, he's, he's about the same distance away as maybe this guy, right? 
and we can see how far away these people are okay but look over here we got much smaller people so there's some play with scale we also have additional sort of spaceships out here in the distance and as we go further away we can understand that because of the scale of the people here relative to the scale of the people here we understand that this vehicle this craft is slightly larger than this one just because of that relationship of one group to um, the object group of people to the object versus this group to this object okay so that's a helpful thing but again look at the detail and contrast in what we see here okay lots and lots of detail contrast bright brights dark darks and everything in between okay you can see all kinds of nifty things happening with how this is all constructed you can see individual cords right and ropes and pulleys and just all kinds of little details now what happens to the details as i go here well you see very few of them and the elements that are in shadow notice this see this whole area is in shadow right here the details in the shadow areas get lost the shadows themselves get lighter okay if i'm over here looking at a shadow look how dark this is okay this whole area but i can still see details within there so i have a lot of ranges of values in there in the darks. These are like 65% black to pure black. Whereas the shadows here, all the way back here, let's just sample that color. Now look at my look at my color right here. See this? I'm somewhere around like 35% gray right there. Okay. And if I go to the lighter area of the ship that's lit by the atmosphere. Okay, we're getting even lighter. But if we come back here, look at our shadows over here. Look over here. Bam. See that? I'm all the way over here. About 80%, right? All the way down here. Okay. Now we're pushing into like pure black territory right here. Pretty cool. And that is such an amazing thing that you can create so much distance just by scaling. But also, mainly in this illustration, I would argue, less detail and uh, less contrast. Your lights and your darks are closer to one another. You're moving up towards the top 50% of your value scale, right? The zero to 50 kind of a range. And then within that range, you're really not varying too much between the lights and the darks. So that everything just kind of gets closer and closer. And this is even more extreme as you go further into the distance. So if you look here, here's my shadow. Okay, I'll just plop that over here. And like say, here's my light. Okay, so there's a difference between the two. But whoa, what back, this is even further back. Let's look at the shadow here. See that? It's about the same value as the light, if not even lighter, okay, for this ship. There's a shadow. Now, let's look at the light. You see how close these are to one another, right here? Okay, look at these two. Let's just take a look at that with our color picker so you can really see this. Now I'm gonna pick this one. You see where that is right there. Now let's pick this one. Oh my God, it barely moved, okay? Now if we go to that ship that was mid distance, okay, here's my light, here's my dark. Greater distance, see that jump, one and two, okay? This is the simple stuff. These are the tricks you can use. Very cool, very cool. Um, now in an illustration like this, you know, perspective kind of goes out the window. We're in the sky, everything is capable of flying and moving all around. We're, it's really hard for us to even decide, you know, where is my horizon line? You kind of have to just assume, well, your horizon line is just wherever you're looking out, straight out, somewhere in the middle of the illustration, okay? And so, you know, as far as perspective and everything, Ian decides, well, I can tilt this ship this way, I can tilt this ship that way, they're spacecraft, they can move in any direction they like, right? Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing where you're not able to really take full advantage of the rules of perspective here, but when you, one rule of perspective we all know about is things getting smaller as they recede into the distance and that's what he's doing. So you're getting things that are moving away from us and getting smaller. Um, and we pointed out earlier that the scale of the figures, the scale of the people really help with that. If you can put an element in your illustration that everybody can relate to and is familiar with, you know, um, something like a person is always great. Could be anything else, could be a little bicycle or, could be a car or some other kind of object we're all familiar with roughly how big it is 
Uh, this is helpful. Okie dokie. All right, so um, moving on. Let's do it. I'm going to hide this for a moment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Ian McHugh, for giving us those lovely examples of really good illustrations that create depth and distance. Um, so now speaking of uh, perspective, let's take a look at that one now. All right. So earlier we did this, we had our illustration and um, this was with the, at the beginning of the, of the show, we had those two spheres, you know, overlapping one another. Um, but this is a great thing. If you can take advantage of perspective, right? So let's say that I have, you know, a vanishing point here and just a simple one point perspective kind of a situation. Okay. And let's say that right here, okay, let me just do this gently and lightly. Let's say right here, I decide I'm going to put a, uh, a little building. Okay, now for scale, I put a little door right there. Okay, and then maybe we have like some windows or whatever. Okay, there we go. All right, now, all I have to do is because of this vanishing point here and because of the rules of perspective is if I put a little building here and I keep the same lines I was using traveling back to that vanishing point okay like this um, everybody is going to understand that these two objects are the same size because we understand when we look at things, even though we don't necessarily, we don't have to have studied the rules of perspective for this to make sense, for us to understand that things are traveling back to the same vanishing point. Um, our human brains just start to get how that works when we're infants, you know, and things start to make sense with our depth perception and all that business, right? So if you want to take advantage of perspective in your in your work to help create a sense of distance and depth, you can get nice and formal with it in this way, and you can successfully do that. Now, what's cool is um, I can do the same thing here. I'll do one more, right? As we're traveling back, we're going back here. I'll do one more right here. All right, we got another one right there. So now everyone's like totally, okay, I get it. These are all the same size. These are all roughly the same kind of a thing. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. But then, right here, what if I put a building like this? Now, because of its location, because of the placement of this building, okay, we'll erase away the little bits we don't need. Because of the placement of this building relative to the others, and because we understand how perspective works, right? This is just sort of a natural thing for us. We're gonna get this right away and be like, oh, wow, I, I, you know, wow, whoa, this is a, this is a big building. Now, is this, object if I isolate it is this object okay bigger than this object no look it's barely half the size half the size see that here it is off in the distance and here it is now but we understand when we're looking at this drawing, that this is a lot bigger than this. And the reason we know that is because as these get progressively smaller, and we know they're all the same size moving away towards this vanishing point, this object here represents this object. They are one and the same, only one is just farther away than the other. Okay, so that means this, because it's even further away, must be very, very large. This is what you can do, this is how you can take advantage. Now, once we've set the scene here, and we understand our scale, I can do things like back here, okay?
I can put, you know, this shape, and people will say, oh, that's a big fat mountain back there. Right now, the reason they're able to sort of understand the scale of that is because of what we've drawn here. And we know that we're pushing that even further back, right? Here's our horizon line. Um, you know, we can have like little sort of cityscape back here. Etc. right? And that all just kind of Look what that does. Now we have this like way off in the distance, okay? And we can get rid of this line here now. We can just suggest that there's a road here, you know? And then we put a person here, okay? And then we put another person here. Walking with a kid, maybe. Right? And now everything kind of falls into place. And we go, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. So, you know, here's that other door. That helps for scale. Uh, you can see how this really, really creates a lot of depth and distance. We didn't even bother messing around with this side, did we? Okay. So that's pretty effective, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Becca said, fat shaming the mountains. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so um, does that make sense? Do you guys see what I'm talking about here? Is this making sense, gang? Everybody cool with this? Right, you can see even just a simple one point perspective drawing, how you create that distance and how we understand scale based on other things that are in the drawing, okay? There's a person, there's a person, here's the building. That same building is all the way back here. This is very, very big. It's like a big hotel or something like that. Who knows, who knows, right? And maybe, you know, this is like a, a lake or something, and I don't know. Who knows what we're looking at here? I don't know. Just make stuff up, etc. Okay? But everything gets pushed really far back into the distance, and um, we're able to understand what's going on. So you create a scene like that using a couple of simple tricks, okay? Um, so let's take a look then at another example here. I'll hide that for a moment. And here's this uh, little sketch I've got with a bird in the forest. Um, now even something like this, where you're looking at something up close, you can create this sense of depth by using these tricks. We're gonna open up our layers here and take a look. So in the foreground, okay, we have the darkest element. This is the, the branches that are closest to us, okay? These, these branches. Um, very, very dark. And right behind it then, I put our, our focal point. This is the bird and this other branch. Now notice what I've done here. The bird and this branch. Now the darkest dark of the bird, okay? Hang on a minute, let me make a little layer and just draw outside of this for you. Um, here we go. This is the darkest dark of the bird, and this is the darkest dark of the tree. And if I look at these together, the darkest dark of the tree is black. And then look, I've jumped up to about 80% for the darkest dark of the bird. So even though there's contrast here and it does look dark, it's not as dark as what's in the extreme foreground, okay? Important to note. The other thing I want you to notice about the bird and, and this tree is they have more detail. This is where I want the people to focus. So even though this is in the extreme stream foreground, I'm just taking that dark dark um, for my tree in the foreground and I'm making it pure silhouette, but very dark. So it pushes to the foreground and I wanted to understand that, you know, it's these branches should be kind of larger. So if I really wanted to, to make that clear, you know, I could make these a little, little bit thicker here than whatever's back there. But these aren't too far away from one another. Okay, that's that's important to understand. They're not too far away from me. But here in the midground, now we've got more detail. Look, I've got some lines here on the tree. See, and I could even go a little crazier with that and get more specific, like this, whatever. 
right? And that's enough to communicate, oh, this is close enough to me that I can see some details, right? And that makes everything stand, stand out, draws the eye, okay? Bird has a few little details here with the on the wings and whatnot, and just, just some little shapes there. Okay, smaller shapes. Big and small, right? Using smaller shapes, not so many big shapes, right? A combo, big, medium, small. Medium and small shapes, we are gonna notice those. If we've got a sea of big shapes all around them. Let's go back one layer, here we go. More trees, now these, let's look at the values here, okay? What do we got here? Lighter still, okay, for all these trees back here. Also trying to show that these are a little smaller, okay, but not much, but they're a little smaller. So there's our scale stuff. We could even do this, like you get get your brush a lot smaller and do, do stuff like that if you wanted to, right? So people are like, oh yeah, that's, that's smaller back there, whatever. Alrighty, and then let's look at what happens next. Okay, we just go here. Ah, now we've done it. Now we've really pushed things even further back. Now this is all the background foliage, the trees and all that other business, okay? And here, we're this light. So let's look at our range of values here. Extreme foreground, black. Okay, now just watch this little area here as we move up, okay, towards the top. Second layer with the bird, that's the darkest dark right there. Then we go to the trees behind, and then we go to the trees in the extreme background. Okie doke. Now look, we're not finished. We're not finished. Now, we've got this value. Look, I've still got room to go here. I'm gonna push it a little lighter, okay? A little lighter still. And now in a layer behind all this, okay? Make a layer. I'm gonna use my same mask here. Um, now that I'm back here, I'll use a softer brush. Okay, so let me use um, this concept carver from the summer brush set. And back here, if I want to, I can do this. I can be like, all right, look. I'm just gonna open up this little sky area here like so. So I'm going even lighter, okay? I've got some foliage back there. Okay, I can even grab that color and I can add bits and pieces where I want them to be, you know, throw like a tree trunk in there or something. Now let's go even lighter still, okay? Here's my color, I'm gonna push it up to about 10%, okay? And then back in the distance there, right? We can just go, boom, cut right across. Right across like this. Back behind that bird. And we're just gonna create like this idea that there's a nice big hilltop there. Behind all of that. Okay, and there's that tree, I don't wanna mess that up. But there you go. All right, and now what's nice is back here, you can play even more. You can push it just a little bit darker and you can be like, cool, I'm gonna, hang on a minute, where am I? Here we go. Um, you can go a little darker, you can break the rules here. So I'm going darker than the actual hill and adding some more shapes for some bushes and maybe some more trees and things like that, you know, back there. But all that stuff still is gonna feel more distant, okay, by virtue of the fact that it's a little higher up, but also it's a little lighter. See, we still haven't gone all the way to white. We're still here. I can push even lighter, and you could suggest maybe that there's a sun over there or something, which wouldn't make sense with the lighting, but do what you want, right? Maybe some clouds in the sky, totally up to you. You want to do that you can do so so we didn't exhaust all our, our uh, options there you know and we're what I wanted to show you is this here okay in this area this isn't too far away from us so now what you can do is start being picky about details say well here 
Let me go just a, a hair darker. And I can do stuff. Let me go back to that layer. Here we go. Um, where are you? There you are. So here I can do I can do stuff like this. I can just add some little bits and pieces like that. See? Now that's not gonna get in the way of anything or complicate anything because it's still lighter than and not too specific the areas that are in front of, so to speak, um, those areas. See, so I add a bit of detail in there and it's totally fine. Not gonna mess anything up. So you can have a bit of detail there, right? This tree back here, you could even sort of add a little, sort of like if you wanna define it further. But this isn't gonna mess anything up. You're still pushing stuff back. You can start to get fancy. Notice there's a highlight on the bird here, right? You could take that, go here, and you could go here actually and go just a hair lighter. And you could just sort of like highlight the edges of some of these bits here. If you want to go even lighter, no one's got these shapes, maybe these areas that are getting like a burst of sunlight. Okay, hitting those, hitting those bits, etc., etc. But it's also to have sharp uh, contrast here. So if I were going to, you know, go ahead and do a, a color layer, just go ahead and change this to um, to color. Um, you know, and then make make the brightest colors, you know, bright and beautiful right here. And then for these areas behind, okay, Right, all this stuff behind the bird. Let's just select one little area there for ourselves. And I'll show you what I mean. So an area like this, and then behind it back here. Okay, get a nice little section there. Um, I'm gonna use um, color that's cooler. There's a nice contrast with red and green. But you see the values are doing their job there. Everything gets a little a little bit uh, lighter. And actually, if I were to set all this color to um, darken, that would probably be a better, a better way to do it. Then you can actually get the saturation of the color in there as well. Okay. See what I mean? I want that to be a little lighter, so I could go ahead and do that. There we go. Something like that. All right, hope that makes sense. Now, last little thing here before we go, to hide our little birdie. I want you to do something like this. I want you to try this kind of exercise. Give yourself a little sketch where what you have is a situation where you have stuff that's far away and stuff that's really close and see if you can use overlap and perspective and sharpness and value and contrast and scale and all these kinds of things to give yourself an illustration that works. So here we have a cat, right? It's looking out the window, it's sitting on the windowsill. Now here's a house. Now the house we know is bigger than the cat, right? But I haven't drawn it that way, I've drawn it smaller. But we know it's bigger because it's farther away, it has less detail, right? And it's farther away because it's further up in the picture plane. There's overlap there with the window overlapping it and then we have the scale of the cat for reference. We understand these are bushes and all this kind of, I can have this branch of the tree right here. Then we have this big vase right here and this table right here. It's like everything just helping me to see extreme foreground, foreground, middle ground, right? And then a background and then like sky in the background, all that stuff. This is the kind of thing I want you to try. Try and set up, set up a little scene for yourself where you're thinking about all of these nice principles that work to create distance and depth in your illustration. Um, and watch this back if you need some reminders of how we did this successfully and how other artists have done it successfully. But you too can put this into play and it's gonna make a big difference. It's gonna really change the way you draw and think about this stuff. And remember, you can do all of this with just line if you need to. You can do all of it with just line. You don't have to be in a, you know, working in a painterly way or any of that if that's intimidating for you. Just try doing it with simple basic drawings. Okay, folks? All right. 
So, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you all had a nice time. It's the weekend, time for everybody to go do something fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope everybody's staying healthy out there and hope you take care of yourselves. And remember, please, to be kind. That's what I want from everybody in this world, if and when they can. Sometimes you gotta be mean, but hopefully not too much. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll say ciao for now.